he's, uh, I guess he's in charge of dissolving uh, Catholics practice. So he called me with something that Tom had with the Knights that I got to take care of. Go ahead. All right, I'm ready. Small Go ahead, Bob. Oh, okay. Thank the you. The light's not on. Very good. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to our regularly scheduled meeting of the Town Council for April 6, 2015. Uh, Tony Martino, if you can lead us in the pledge. Thank you. Dolores? Councilor Hammond? Here. Councilor Hurley uh, may be late. Councilor Kotkin? Here. Councilor Manusos? Here. Councilor Martino? Here. Councilor Rell? Here. Councilor Roberts will be joining us uh, after her other meeting. Deputy Mayor Barry? Here. And Mayor Montaneri? Here. Thank, Thank you, you, Dolores. Um, our first order of business is uh, any public comments on a hearing item. Uh, hearing items on a resolution endorsing and authorizing the Town of Wethersfield to participate in an Office of Policy and Management Regional Performance Incentive Program grant for a regional computer forensics lab. Um, is anybody in the public here this evening to speak on behalf or against uh, this hearing item? Anybody here for that hearing item this evening? Last call. Anyone for that hearing item? Bob? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. I take it it's this JAG grant that you're talking about, isn't it? No. 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 Which? What is it called? <clears throat> this is. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no. Go ahead, Jeff. You can. You can this is the regional performance incentive grant. It's the hearing item under A1 on and, the agenda. And, and how many dollars is that? A1. It's $150,000 shared amongst the towns for a regional computer forensic lab. Ah. Okay. I've read about that. I would, all, the, all, the, all these grants you're after, Mayor, you should turn them down. The people of Connecticut can't afford all these grants that are going out. What you're doing is encouraging the more spending, spending of money that we don't even have, which means we're living beyond our means. I would urge you seriously to vote no. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, we'll move into open public comment on any uh, topic of interest. Anyone wishing to speak this evening? Gus? Good evening. Gus Colantonio, 60 Morrison Avenue. Guess what? Stop sign again. Uh, I want to make something clear that basically I'm not requesting that you remove a stop sign on, on Hillcrest and Orchard. I'm just requesting that you install the stop sign on Morrison Avenue, either before Tifton or before Orchard. Now I have to ask the question, since Hillcrest Avenue has three stop signs <coughs> on the intersection of Orchard and Hillcrest, and Morrison Avenue has two stop signs, and Morrison and Orchard. And I gotta ask, why? Is it because Hillcrest Avenue is 30 feet wide, and Morrison Avenue is 24? Or is it because Hillcrest Avenue has half the amount of cars that Morrison Avenue has? Or is it because the, the how do you call it, the frontage, and Hillcrest Avenue is much more than the frontage required on Morrison Avenue. Or is it because, I guess, when in 1955, Morrison Avenue never connected to Silas Dean, the town decided to connect it and put more cars on Morrison Avenue? I've asked many times, and I never got an answer. The only answer I got was basically, says, Stop signs are used not to, not to control the speed. So because I say people go too fast, they think that I'm requesting a stop sign 
Okay? So that's not the case. Now, I have to bring back again, uh, I think it's, uh, let me see, Charter Road from Route 3 to Town Line Road. Within Wethersfield, there has two T intersection with three stop signs. And before you approach stop sign, there is another sign saying, stop sign ahead. Why? Why so many stop signs? You can see it from one end of Route 3 all the way to Town, Ro to town Line Road. So why do you need all those stop signs? And why in Rocky Hill, the first road, the intersection, there's only one stop sign. So as long as I don't get an answer, I will be asking this every time. Thank you. Thank you, Gus. Others uh, wish to speak this evening? Dave? Good evening, uh, David Kirk, 149 Broad Street. Uh, last time I was here was uh, uh, March 2nd, and uh, Councillor Barry was in charge, and he did a uh, very good job. And he thanked me. Thank you. Um, I spoke about the uh, budget uh, cool. on the Board of Education, and um, I went online and I looked at the budget, and uh, it, it, there was just too much information. I, I really couldn't figure out what you approve, what you didn't approve of, so I'm going to repeat myself and uh, thank you Paul for allowing uh, speakers some liberty in extra time as you have done in the past but uh, <clears throat> some of the things I said was uh, the the uh, the Board of Ed wants to to uh, push this uh, technology for math and, and math textbooks, and, and uh, that's, uh, from what I heard, it would be the first thing they would cut if, if you didn't uh, fund them as they want. So, so here are some of the things I said at that meeting that, Paul, you weren't there. I don't know if you watched the repeats or whatever. But, uh, uh, my daughter, is a high school student at Wethersfield High. She's a good student. And I have a son who's a lot younger, who will be in middle school very soon. Now, uh, I, I will admit, my, my son, I sent him to Cor Corpus Christi, so he's not in public school yet, but I, I plan to transfer over to public school. Now. A lot of people in Wethersfield, not a lot, but some people in Wethersfield, uh, put their kids in private school. But if the public schools were just as good as the public schools, the private schools, they would send them to, to the private school, uh, public schools. Now, I believe that the public schools are just as good as the private schools. Now, if you, if you allow the public schools to get their needs, and that is the technology, and that was one of the issues at the last meeting, the technology and the textbooks. Uh, I, th I think it was called Go Math, or I, I don't remember what it was called, but, but it was, it was uh, highly touted by the teachers. And, uh, I was impressed with it, and I don't know if you guys were impressed with it also, because one of the comments I made was uh, that the uh, some, something the uh, superintendent a comment that the superintendent made was that uh, uh, you have good schools, you have good people moving to your towns. And, and I commented that my sister-in-law is a, a teacher, and she moved to West Hartford because she thought the schools were a little better. I moved to Wethersfield because I thought the schools were very good. 
Now that the school system has a great deal to do with who moves in your town. Unless you want people who don't care about schools. And the, I, I, I'm sure Wethersfield does not want that population coming here. Oh, we don't care about schools. Let's, <coughs> you know, let's move to Wethersfield. They, 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 their schools stink. You know, you don't want people like that. So schools are, are sort of the priority in town. Now, I didn't see the budget. I don't know if you approve the uh, Go Math or the technology they were asking for, the extra textbooks they were asking for, but I hope you did. I don't know if, uh, I guess today is the day you decide uh, whether or not you're gonna pay for it. I, I hope you did. Uh, at the last Board of Ed meeting, they discussed, uh, a lot of teachers talked about it. And uh, I wish they were here today because this is a day that you decide, I, I think, I don't know. Uh, no, okay, not quite, okay, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Ms. Hedden, <laughs> for clarifying it because uh, I thought today was the, was the day, but I guess today's the day you're talking about it. So, so um, education is very important in Wethersfield. And um, I, I just hope you don't shortcut Wethersfield. And, and in my speech, uh, as Mr. Barry, Councilor Barry could well remember, I compared Wethersfield to West Hartford and Glastonbury because my, my sister-in-law moved to, uh, ultimately moved to West Hartford because she thought the schools were a little bit better. And uh, I was thinking about moving to Glastonbury myself. Uh, they, got, they got good schools. But I decided to move to Wethersfield because, not just because of the schools, because I thought the people here were, were good. I, I, I like good people. I thought the people here were not snobs. They were just good old fashioned, a lot of blue collar, some white collar, but just, just wholesome people. So that's why I moved to Wethersfield. And um, I, I hope you don't shortcut education because that, that will make a big difference in Wethersfield. Thanks. Thanks, David. Uh, just to clarify, we're taking a presentation from the town manager on the town budget this evening, and we have a, uh, several meetings before the budget will be addressed as far as formal voting until May. So you still have a little bit of time if you want to weigh in. Thanks, David. Any other comments this evening? Yes, up front. Oh, you come as a pair? Yes. <laughs> Two for the price of one. All right. <laughs> and actually, we're not coming to ask for anything. Um, my name is Regina Vaughn. I live at 59 Whippewa Way. I am a paraeducator for the Board of Ed. Um, and we'd like to invite you to enjoy an initiative that our secretary and power union have started. We are doing a Light It Up Blue Day for Autism Speaks on April 29th. Normally, Autism Speaks Light It Up Blue Day is April 2nd, but since we were on vacation, and then there's SBAX, and then there's Earth Day, so our <laughs> Light It Up Blue has to be April 29th. And what we're doing is our union is sponsoring T-shirts that we will all wear on April 29th. So we just want to let the town know to work with us and help support us. And maybe your children or you yourselves will all buy a t-shirt and we'll all wear them on April 29th together and try to help our students and um, fight this autism that just seems to be taking over everything. Um, the best thing about Weathersfield are the children that we work with and we just want to show our support and we hope that you will too. When, when do the shirts go on sale? They're on uh, sale now. They're on sale now. And, we can get you, you. You can get um, them where? Yeah, yep. all we the can schools. Gotcha. All the schools. Uh, they're all being the, sold in every single school. Every school, teachers, staff, And it's on faculty, the uh, Board of Ed Facebook page. Family and friends. You know, Great. And $15 a t-shirt. <clears throat> and we hope that you wear them on April 29th. Thank you. Right. Thank you Thank for you sharing so much. that. Appreciate that. Public comments? Any other public comments this evening? Bob? Uh, good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. <clears throat> I'd like to, um, you know, I noticed an article regarding the uh, state feeling urban outflow. 
And I hope all you folks have read this. I mean, this is a 20,000 head count that has left the state in a very short time. But that's also doesn't include the students that are leaving. This is this is this appears that the students are. I don't think they're they're being counted as well, but I know that there's a lot of them that are leaving as well. And I would think that this would be an opening. You know, I've talked about the people that were leaving in the past, and and as they leave, the, those who are left have to pay your big tax increases. And I would I would hope that this would finally sink in, Mayor, that you are really losing people. And it, and. I don't know what are, what are the reason you could come up with. The weather? High taxes? I don't know what. But from what I've seen, the high tax issue is, is extremely difficult in this state. And Weathersfield has been battling the high tax issue, but been very um, uh, less aggressive to keep it down. And I would hope that this year you would really keep it down because we. You know, I don't think the citizens can keep up with this. We see a lot of empty houses. We haven't seen the prices going up much. We haven't seen much in sales in this town in this year. We've, we've seen a lot of foreclosures, you know, since uh, July to September of 2014. They had 16 foreclosures in the weathers, in Weathersfield. That's just a short time span. <coughs> And you know, that's, the, that's so unfortunate for those people that end up losing. But the rest of us lose too, because the value's gone down in the town, uh, in that area where that house was or houses are. And it hurts all of us, and we haven't seen it come back. I've seen houses sit on the market and, and going nowhere. The only one that's going anywhere is the state of Connecticut, and they just keep borrowing another half a billion dollars. University of Connecticut, $300 billion, million dollars, $300 million. That's $800 million in a short period of time. But that's to fund all of these uh, factories and offices and places that the great governor has been uh, funding with our money, with our borrowed money, that is. And then, of course, we have the town of Weathersfield that ends up repairing skate parks and, 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 and helping out this uh, Devlin uh, uh, senior citizen apartments with, uh, however, with grants. And where do those grants come from? They don't come from out of the sky somewhere. Someone has to work to make up that money. Someone has to go and borrow the money. So you can then take care of these people. And you know, what do the rest of us do? We, we can't live like this. I mean, I mean, you, it just goes on, Mayor. And, and the living is expensive here. Now, I also noticed in the, um, where, where is it, yeah. In your agenda tonight, you have a, introduction to a resolution regarding the opposition to the Senate bill number one. I've been reading about that in the paper. I think they spoke about that last year up at the Capitol, how they wanted to sort of kick in a new plan. And you know, this, this Senate bill one doesn't work for Weathersfield. I, I believe you've even made a comment on, on that. And I support the people that are writing this and putting this out. And it's too bad, and I wish you, Mayor, would, would get, out, get in line and, uh, and support this at the state capitol. You know, we've seen so much bad that comes out of that state legislature. And while all this bad stuff is coming out up there, nobody here talks about it. There's no public comment from our council members, from our elected officials about all this bad stuff that goes on up there, all this reckless spending that they do. Nobody talks about it. I gotta say this, this is a start, and I think you should all get behind it. Because, heaven forbid, those knuckleheads up there go with it. We're in trouble. You know that. Your, your revenue is gonna drop. It's going to go to Harford, Bridgeport, 
and, and New London and Waterbury and some other places in between, and we're going to get less than what we're getting right now. So we have to stand up to those people up there. It shouldn't be, I'm one of them politically, and the other guy says, I'm one of them politically, and I got to stand with them. Hogwash. You've got to put your foot down for the right reasons, and this is the right reason. We see all these grants going out that you're <coughs> applying for on a regular basis. Where does the money come from? Nobody cares. But some fine day, the bankers who are bankrolling the state of Connecticut are going to say no. And when that day comes, it's going to be a difficult time here. I'd like to go on. I probably exhausted my five minutes, but um, I'll be back. Thank you very much, you. Mayor. And I hope you would really consider joining this because I think we, someone needs to send a message, and it has to be public officials. Citizens, we can call up all we want. We, they couldn't care less about us, but they would listen to public officials. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other public comments? Seekers, 117 Wells Road. I want to say uh, hallelujah, the winter's over. The snow was awful this year, but it could have been worse. I've got to give our town some credit. <coughs> We've also got to give them a little more kick in the butt to be more prepared next year. But it's always easy to say that afterward. Somebody once told me it's uh, always easy to ask for forgiveness and permission. But uh, I want to tell everybody that uh, upcoming in like 11 days from now, on the 17th of April, we're having the uh, annual spring dance of the uh, Elna Buck Wolf Nature Center. It's going to be a fun time. Our ticket sales are still plenty of tickets. There'll be food, a live band, sonic auction, and a lot of fun for good cause. And uh, mark that date on your calendar. And, uh, if every group helps every other group in town. You know, united we stand, divided we fall, our town will be stronger. So if we can help each other out, then it will all be stronger because really, it's true. United we stand, divided we fall. So if we all help one another, our town could be better and why not be better than worst? I thank you. Thank you, Lee. Other pump comments this evening? Seeing none, we'll move into uh, council reports. Council reports this evening. Tony? I have two. Uh, the Senior Citizens Advisory Commission met since our last meeting, uh, and they had a resident show up uh, <coughs> looking for services to take uh, a group of seniors to local museums at a regular price. Uh, this came up before when we had the uh, Weathersfield Advisory Commission meeting with people with disabilities where uh, Curtin was there this year uh, going over their transportation needs and uh, there's a few groups that are looking for reasonably priced rides to uh, take them to local museums so they could do stuff during the days. So uh, they'll be looked at for possible consideration in Curtin's contract or you know, some other way of doing it in the future. And like I also said, the Weathersfield Advisory Commission for people with disabilities met uh, their last meeting was held at the First Church Village uh, with uh, various seniors in town going over Curtin's contract and <coughs> what they're doing good and you know, what they'd like to see improve. So uh, it was a well-run session and uh, both sides got a lot out of it. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Jeff? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. A couple things. Uh, attended a library committee meeting. They approved the budget that will be coming to us. Um, one of the things we'll see in it is that they're looking to spend some money to, for a total upgrade of the library website, which they, 
members of the committee and, and the uh, director consider to be really woefully out of date and they're going to probably be reducing their budget at least for next year for acquisitions to, to pay for that. Uh, also attended the insurance committee meeting. Um, they're doing some work on the wording of the RFP for a claims audit that we uh, endorsed earlier this year. And also on health insurance, I, I believe the budget Jeff's going to be showing us has something close to about 8.9% uh, built in uh, in terms of an increase. Um, there's, uh, they're still looking at those numbers. Hopefully they'll come down a bit. Uh, but regardless, uh, last several years we benefited from essentially flat to lower health insurance costs. And the claims experience this year just is not as good as uh, we had seen previous years. It's close to budget, a little above, but it's not running a million or two million under budget like we've seen the last few years. That's it. Thank you, Jeff. Other counselor reports? Jerry? Yes, the uh, Youth Advisory Board may, uh, met on March 26th, and as I've said before, this um, committee is really active this year. A lot of involvement from people that serve on it and also uh, volunteers in town. So it's uh, pleasant, pleasant to go to the meetings and a lot of energy in the room. Two things, there's on May, well, three things. On May 7th, they'll be having the Youth Volunteer Recognition Night at the Community Center. Um, also on Monday, April 20th at 7 p.m. at Pitkin Community Center, there's a program on internet safety. It's a free workshop for parents only, um, featuring Scott Driscoll of Internet Safety Concepts. Uh, that's the same night as our budget hearing, but I'm sure that there are many parents that uh, one parent can come here and the other one can go to internet safety. Um, but it looks like a great program. And then the most important thing is they're offering a $1,000 scholarship this year, uh, which will be awarded at Youth Recognition Night. Uh, the deadline to apply is April 20th, and students who uh, are interested in applying can get the application at the library, the, gui the high school guidance office, or the Nature Center. That's it. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, council comments? Council comments? Mike, real? Just, just real quick, I don't know if uh, you know Jeff or you, Paul, have the answer to this, but the, uh, the black bear that keeps coming into the uh, town, DEP um, recently relocated it. Do we know if it's the same bear that was here last year? I mean, it, does it have a tag or anything? Jerry's not here. Yeah, it was, it was on my street, so yeah. I spent a lot of time with the bear the other night. Uh, he was actually at my bird feeder waving at my husband. It freaked my husband out completely. <laughs> Um, it's bear number 104, so he's tagged. Same one as yeah. last year? Yeah, in case you see him around. Okay. That's the <laughs> and they, the state did relocate it? Yes, he left in the back of a pickup around midnight, so he was... Um, Hopefully he won't be back. Right, right, being relocated. for. I think they had relocated him once before, but right. not far enough not away. Not far so. enough. <laughs> okay, thank you. Other comments? Tony? Uh, they need your mic down just a little bit, Tom. They can't quite hear you. Okay. Uh, the, um, we had a tour of Hamner School. Uh, some of the parents had some concerns at the playground over there, so some of the counselors showed up that night for that <coughs> tour. Uh, at the same time, Mr. Bushy took us around and showed us some uh, roof leaks that occurred as a result of the uh, ice up on the roof uh, backing things up. Uh, so we're well informed on that, and we'll see what we can do to take care of at least the, uh, the playground area. Uh, Mr. Bushy thinks things are under control with uh, replacing some drains at the school there. Uh, and then I just want to commend the uh, fire department on their wine and cheese. Uh, they put on a very nice uh, affair uh, a week or so ago. Uh, they should be commended for that. Thank you, Tony. Okay, Jeff, you have the floor. Yep, take your time. So. It'll go away in a minute here. Is it on here? No, it's not on. Is it on? Is it back up? Is it on? No. Is it on? Can you hear me now? Is it on? 
Yes. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, this is a brief presentation. It'll be more uh, in-depth presentation at the formal pub public hearing on April 20th in this room, 7 p.m. That'll be the uh, second town council meeting of the month. And by charter, we hold the public hearing on the budget on that day every year. So uh, just briefly, this budget includes the Board of Ed. So this is the full town budget, including Board of Ed and roads and capital improvements. Um, so if you, you heard last time about the education budget up here on the left, uh, they went up $1.86 million, 3.31%. Uh, the town, not including roads, went up $1.95 million. Um, over a million of that is debt service on the high school. So a big piece of the town side increase is the debt service to pay for the high school bonds we issued uh, earlier this year. And then a small increase in the road levy just to round it off to 1.5 million. Total increase 3.7 million, which equates to a 4.07% increase. Now as Councilor Kotkin talked about health insurance, we have changes in health insurance. So the budget as it's presented this evening has an 8.9% increase for health insurance. That number is now closer to 7.8. So we'll make adjustments as we go forward towards adoption on, uh, prior to May 15th. If you look at the history of the mill levy, you can see how it has ranged over the, since 2005. The, what makes this one interesting, uh, this graph interesting, you can usually see where there's reval and the revaluation results in a much higher set of values because of slow growth in values during the five years between revals. But as you notice, we had reval last year and we didn't quite get that increase in value. We held uh, close to full value, but we didn't get the increases we had in prior revaluations. So that's a little different than what we've seen in the past. Um, just some points of uh, interest in the budget. Debt service on the high school adds $1.93 million. That's on $22 million that we issued. We intend to issue approximately $21 to $22 million more before the project is over. And one to two more issues over the next year or so. Health insurance is increasing at 8.9%. Again, that number will come down. Uh, to accommodate the new 911 system, the state's rolling out, there'll be three new dispatchers. That'll give us two dispatchers on at all time. We're converting a records clerk position to a dispatcher and adding two. Um, the MDC tax levy is increasing by 5.7% or $157,000. Uh, contractual salary changes depending upon the union, 2.5% uh, adjustments for part-time and non-union. Minimum wage adjustments, that hits the parks department pretty heavy because of our program staff. Uh, we do have a reduction and solid waste expenses by about $200,000 due to our new collection contract. And we're adding a, a new physical service maintenance worker <coughs> that's funded for half a year, and then next year we'll annualize that. But we're realizing with the field maintenance, snow removal, those kind of things, and the high school, the way the high school is laid out, there'll be significantly <coughs> more things to clear snow from and maintain. We needed the extra body. Um, spending increases over time, you can see the chart at the top, um, kind of explains itself over those years. 2008, the world came to an end and that really changed a lot of the way we look at things. And then the bottom chart talk, looks at the split between education expenses and non-education expenses. Um, it's an interesting graph, but you can see, of course, it, as in most towns, education takes up the lion's share of the, of the town budget. So. What's next? There we go. Did I miss two pages? Nope, miss one. Okay, uh, municipal aid. There's been a lot of discussion about municipal aid. This is kind of the big pot we get. Of course, the big number is always ECS grants. That's what goes to the schools direct. Uh, that number's unchanged. Uh, some of these went up, like uh, the pilot went up a little bit uh, fractionally. 
Pequot went up a little bit. Town Aid Road and Loship stayed the same. Um, what doesn't show here, there's three particular grants that impact our social services department that we're not planning or not contained within the governor's budget. So we haven't included those as revenues. They are the Youth Bureau Service Grant or Youth mm -hmm. Service Bureau Grant. And that's about $22,000 that pays for the youth services coordinator's salary or portion thereof. Um, the Capital Area Substance Abuse Council Grant or the CASAC Grant, that's about $4,200. Again, that was removed from the governor's budget. And then the Social Services Block Grant that helps pay the salary or our elderly services coordinator. Again, that wasn't included in the governor's budget, but we are funding those programs fully in this budget and replacing the revenue. Um, fund balance, we learned during the lead up to the sale of the $22 million worth of bonds that rating agencies are more than any time past interested in your, uh, your fund balance. How much is in your rating day fund? How much do you have on hand? in case you have a bad day or a bad year. We're trying to maintain a high level of fund balance. So you can see as this budget's presented this evening, the fund balance is 10 point five, six, six. 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 Um, our policy calls for seven to 10, but in the message, and Jeff and I have talked about this, Councilor Cock and I have talked about this, raising that up, eight to 11, eight to 12, that way we can, uh, if we do have more fund balance, we're still within policy. The current budget or proposed budget you see is using, again, $300,000 worth of fund balance. It's sustainable that way, and we kind of use that to offset against uh, revenues in case we don't get all the revenues. We offset that with the fund balance, and that way uh, we can fund the total budget. Capital improvements, um, drainage, fire safety improvements, um, this includes three new hydrants along the Silestein Highway. Um, the, big, the big one here is schools we're putting in. Uh, this includes the Emerson Williams gym floor. So that was a big topic for a lot of uh, the community over the past couple months. So that's a capital budget, 905000 <coughs> That's about what we spent in the current year, funded by the general fund, and then 90000 from the CNEF Trust. As of today, for the current year, we've accumulated $65,000 in interest towards the 90 we anticipate for the year. So we're in pretty good shape with that revenue stream. And a detailed list of all the different improvements are in the, in the budget. Uh, CNEF, which is rolling stock machinery, non-capital uh, heavy duty expenditures. Again, uh, police car replacements software for the tax collector, that's the last year of that expense, a dump truck, a backhoe, gang mowers, uh, machine balancers, pagers, the typical stuff we burn through on whether, you know, this backhoe, how old's a backhoe, 1980 something? Some ancient thing, right? Yeah. So um, that's the rolling stock. And again, that's all contained within the, in the budget. Um, Leases on the equipment, we've been good at the end of each year with money left over. Instead of leasing, we just used the cash left over to buy some of those things. One of the big items is Wi-Fi at Town Hall, and that's generic. It's Wi-Fi at most of the town buildings. We're rolling out. We get a high demand for public Wi-Fi at our buildings and, and also for our staff to use their devices during meetings, uh, not to play on the Internet, but to connect to the, to the network. So. <laughs> but uh, that's where we are with that. Um, budget process, public hearing is April 20th, 2015, 7 p.m. Town Council Chamber. The full budget, that book, some of you picked up, and there's a box of them over here, is online at weathersfieldct.com. You can get the whole, as much as you want to know, as much as you ever wanted to know is in that book. Comments, uh, phone, 2801. Uh, Jeff Bridges at weatherfieldct.com. You can mail them in, um, whichever, you, uh, whichever way you want to go. Uh, and the budget by charter must be adopted by the town council by May 15, 2015. And, and as you heard a little bit this evening, there'll be, a, there'll be public, or excuse me, um, budget meetings 
at least three are scheduled so far for the council to review the budgets and uh, make rec spending recommendations and at some point adopt the budget by May 15th. So that's the briefly budget presentation or brief budget presentation. If the council has any questions, at least right now, we have to take it. I, I can question. walk and speak at the same time. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, and I know we briefly talked about this, but at the, the Emerson gym that's, that's in the budget, we obviously want to get that done. There's one part that had a leak. Um, now that's not in there. Can you just explain why again? We want to make sure been, that's done before. Right, the leak's been fixed, Florida. right? Fred, where's Fred? That leak's been fixed at Emerson? Okay, thank you. All right. Anybody else? Everybody's overwhelmed. Is there a motion? No. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Um, <clears throat> obviously, we have several meetings scheduled a full day on a Saturday, a couple of the public hearing on the 20th, but uh, so I'm sure we'll do uh, a fair amount of work with it. But I wanted to thank Jeff, our town manager, and his staff uh, for the assembly of the, of the budget that's been pr delivered to us for our initial uh, digestion, I guess. And just uh, once again, uh, Jeff, your, your budget documentation and work and all the behind the scenes work with our department heads is just outstanding. So deeply appreciate that work. I know it's a lot, a lot of hours. So thank well, you. It was, a, it was a good process. We, our new finance director, Mike O'Neill, had an opportunity to start from scratch this year. <laughs> And uh, that was a tremendous help. He's got a very fresh look on, on these kind of things, and his staff did a great job. Thanks, Jeff. Um, town Clerk, anything for Lars? Before we move on? No. No, no communications. Okay, good. So we'll move into Council Action. Um, I think, Donna, you have an appointment and a resignation. We'll start with the resignation. I do. I have a resignation from the Central Connecticut Health District. Paul T. Clunan of 668 Ridge Road, effective April 6, 2015. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? And then an appointment, Donna? I have an appointment to Inland Wetlands as an alternate. Lou E. Michaels, 303 Garden Street, 46, 2015 to 630, 2016. It's Thanks. filling a vacancy. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we're going to move to B2, unfinished business, the acceptance of a bid for the reconstruction of Fairlane Drive. Motion to approve the bid from General Paving for $433,735 for the reconstruction of Fairlane Drive. Second. A motion and a second. Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll ask Mike Turner to go over this item <coughs> tabled from the last meeting, uh, and I believe the full bid tab was in your packet this evening. Yes, I, I, uh, good evening, Councilors. Um, I believe uh, part of the information that was provided at your last meeting was cut off and you did not have the full bid tabulation from all of the vendors that had bid on this particular project. Again, General Paving is the low bidder. Um, obviously, he has you know worked with us in the past very successfully. and. Uh, we make the recommendation to award to general. Questions for Mike on this? Donna? When I read through this, Mike, um, I got the impression that, I, and let me just back up. I know when we do these kind of projects, though the total reconstruction, that we take the money that we get from LOSIP and kind of bank it Correct. so that we can afford to do some of these type of um, projects because they, obviously cost more than just a milling and overlay. Um, and this was delayed because we didn't have enough. Is that, I got the impression that we had received less money so from the LOSIP grant. So if you could help me understand. Okay, yeah, we received the, lo the LOSIP is a, is a, uh, a grant application or, or a grant uh, award essentially that we get um, each year around March, okay. Um, and basically the way LOSIP works is you have to, it's, it's basically money that is set aside, if you will, in a checkbook and you have to apply 
on a, on a very specific project to draw it down. Um, so you're right. At the la you know, when we opened the bids, um, we we were early in terms of having the money availability. So we didn't get any less than. Uh, Okay. This past year. Because when I read it, I got yeah. the impression that we got less, and it just gave me pause because here we go. No, I, th I think what happened was we were finishing up the Jordan Lane project, which was the last LOSA project that we had. We still had leftover funding that had to go to, to pay those, those final bills on that, and with the remainder, we did not have enough <coughs> to make the award uh, okay. last March. So. Thank you. Jeff? Um, Mike, if we approve it tonight, when would we expect the work to start and when do we expect it to end? He's, he's looking at a July start and it will be done before winter. Before winter? Yes. Okay. So the road will be yes. torn up for, you know. Good, good part of the summer. Okay. All right. Other questions? Okay. We have a motion and a second in front of us for approval. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> Motion passes. Thank, Thank you, Mike. You. Thank you. Okay, moving to uh, B3, other business. Approval of a resolution authorizing the submission. Motion to adopt a resolution supporting the regional performance incentive grant for a regional computer forensic lab. Second. Motion and a second. <coughs> Jeff? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, CROG is soliciting RPI grants, Regional Performance Incentives Grants, um, for different projects. One of them is this regional labor uh, computer laboratory that has done some good work already on bullying and uh, computer crimes and so forth. So they're looking to get this grant to uh, enhance their capabilities. And it's supported by our police department. Questions about this? Okay, pretty straightforward. Seeing none, uh, we have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you, motion passes. Uh, 3B. Motion to approve the JAG Violence Prevention Grant for $22,000. Second. Motion and second in front of us, Jeff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. This is a grant request from the police department to add some additional security on the buildings and some of the uh, surrounds at the police department, uh, basically to keep out burglars. Um, it's all hardware, uh, there's no match, and it's not, there's no personnel, it's just hardware. Thank you. Questions for Jeff on this? Again, pretty straightforward. <coughs> okay. Mike Rell? Just a question, I'm reading impact if it's not approved. Um, they currently rely on the current system, has there been any problems with the current system at all? Uh, Break-ins or anything like that? No, it's just not very sophisticated or uh, there's not a lot of camera surveillance out back and the sheds that we house, the new radio equipment and some of the other equipment out back are not protected. Okay, perfect, thank you. That's Mike. Motion and second in front of us, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions? Motion passes, thank you. And 3C. Motion to authorize the town manager to apply for and accept a state grant for the police and youth program for an amount up to $10,000. Second. Motion and second in front of us. Jeff? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I'll ask uh, Kathy Bagley to, to lead you through this one. Good evening, Kath. <clears throat> Good evening. This grant uh, is, uh, we've, uh, we're going to be applying for it through our um, well, kind of in collaboration with the police department. That's probably the key thing. And it's geared to have um, police officers that are on patrol interact with students uh, pretty much from middle school to high school age. And this grant will be for the school year coming up in 15-16. And our goal is to um, get the interaction started so that the police officers can interact with the students in a variety of adventure activities where they would go out, actually plan the activities, work on that piece of it, develop leadership skills, planning skills, and working with the officers, go out and actually go on the adventure. So that's the premise behind the grant. Questions for Kathy on this? Seeing none. 
Thank you, Kath. Uh, we have a motion and second in front of us for application for grant. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Finally Thank three. you. Thank you, Kath. Finally, 3D. Motion to accept the proposed memorandum of agreement between the town of Wethersfield, the Wethersfield Board of Education, and CSEE slash SEIU Local <coughs> 2001, CTW Custodian and Maintenance Union. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Jeff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. A couple of years ago, we were in negotiations with the Custodian Union for pension changes as we had, as we had negotiated with the other bargaining units. Um, their contract, the custodian's contract with the Board of Ed, does not include any reference to pension whatsoever. So any amendment to the pension program for the custodians has to be done by the town council in the pension document itself. Uh, we took an action that evening. Um, there has been, there was a challenge to that action by the custodians. However, over the last year or so, we've negotiated the change as we ha would have at that time, and they've accepted the same program that the other bargaining units have accepted where they pay a higher portion to the, into the pension, they give it up for new members, their, their new members go into a 401k type package. So this agreement basically memorializes what we requested two years ago. Um, any paybacks in terms of uh, contributions into the 401k to the union members will be made by the Board of Ed and they are on board with that. So this basically brings us back to where we were two years ago with the rest of the bargaining units. And the board and the custodians have signed off on it. Thank you, and of course you support it, Jeff. Absolutely. Thank you. Questions about this for Jeff? Jeff. Um, Jeff, when, assuming we approve this tonight, will there be any employee bargaining unit other than the police that are still, where new members still receive a pension? Once we approve, once we approve this, or is are there other groups that I'm not thinking of? That no, uh, there will be no group other than the police that are still where newly hired employees enter into the defined benefit plan, mm -hmm. and even the custodians since 2012 have not participated. Okay, new hire custodians. But this sort of memorializes that in a sense, or it resolves all the outstanding issues that we weren't able to negotiate at the time. Okay, thank you. Good job. Thank you. Great job. Mike? How much, I mean, how much does the Board of Ed have to go back and pay? Uh, there'll be two people, four and a half percent times two years, or times now, be, from now to October 1st, 2012. There were three, but one of them moved up to a different position, and so. When, uh, with the other groups, the arrangement was there's four and a half from the employee, four and a half from the employer. The way the custodians at, at the time, since they didn't negotiate, it was four and a half from the custodians into the 401k, no employer match at that time. So basically we're gonna back up and do the employer match as we, has, as we, as we have done with the other groups or the Board of Ed will. Questions, other questions? Let's work, Jeff, on that. We have a motion and a second in front of us for this approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Extensions? Thank you. Bids, 4A. Motion to accept a bid from Easy Doc Northeast, also known as FWM Inc., as the lowest bidder meeting the specifications for $414,100. Second. I think we have a motion and a second. I assume Kathy is gonna come up on this one. This is um, the start of our dock project down at Weathersfield Cove. We've been working on the project for a number of years and um, gotten all the state permits, Army Corps of Engineer permits, all the town um, boards and commissions. And, uh, and we also received a federal grant to pay for part of this, install for part of the work, both the materials and the installation. So we went out to bid and received three bidders. And working with our engineering firm, the bids were reviewed and they made a recommendation based on the company that met the qualifications and the specifications and had the lowest bid in that regard. So that was the process we went through to be here this evening to submit the bid for your award tonight. 
Thank you, Kath. Questions for Kathy on this? Jeff. Kathy, could you give us, uh, and those who use the Cove, some sort of idea of schedule? <clears throat> the, um, the bid uh, from Easy Dock identified that it would be approximately 21 days, so I would say three to four weeks to have the work done. The, the beginning part would be the um, uh, actually getting the docks built off site and then brought to the site. Uh, installed on the site and then they're actually installed with um, helical anchors to the uh, ground in the water and so first you position the docks in and then you actually anchor them in so th and then you get all the docks in and then also part of this project is putting some um, navigation aids up in the cove and some additional moorings so that will be the process that they'll go through and what roughly when? The time frame will be based on they're going to they have to watch the water a little bit for the height of the water to determine when's the best time that they can do it when the water's a little bit lower and when's the best time we think it should go in um, based again on water conditions and the minimal impact we want to have to the boating season so it's a it's a mix of both okay but, but definitely this season this season, this okay. season definitely okay Okay, and I, I was, you had a good uh, sort of sp spreadsheet on the money. Um, and it looks like the total cost of the project as I look at it is if you include this, the construction but also the design and all the other pieces, it looks like 700000 more or less. Yes, that total. is correct. And it looks like we got almost a half a million in federal grants and then it looks like we're going to be not spending as much in the and town money as we had thought so I guess between you and Jeff does that does that money then go back into our capital improvement fund potentially for other projects as I look at this just based on the spreadsheet it looks like we've approved 275,000 and you expect to use about 232,000 I, I think the way the grant works is there's a there's a hard split 75 25 so we'll mix that but there's also What's not shown here is the 25 the CIAC put into next year's budget as kind of, we didn't know the bids weren't out yet. So that's available to reallocate. And then when we're done, of course, whatever it's not spent, we can reallocate as well. And the council will, you know, will look at the split between the Cove Preservation Fund and the, what the town put in too in terms of expense split. Okay, all right. I, I would just ask when we do go through, maybe on the 25th when we go through the budget, Maybe if you could have some idea now that you have this bid and what the impact would be on either money that's been previously allocated for capital or on what the capital improvements group um, recommended. You know, just to see if there's other projects we, we, may, we may want to do that got knocked off or what we want to do as we go through the budget. And right, we know the 25 that we can reallocate. And the CIC gave us a priority list in addition to the 905,000 on if money became available, this is what they recommend us funding in priority order. And because of the federal town split, um, the, um, the bid as it came in, we also had to send that out to the state for them to review it because not only would there be a reduction on the town match, there'll probably be a percentage reduction on the federal match also. Okay. And we're looking at that now. Thank you. My question basically a lot of answers because I was concerned about the 25 we had in this mm -hmm. year's budget mm -hmm. for the 25 because if we can reallocate it, we might be able to finish a project that we're only going to be able to start this coming year. Mm -hmm. We'll Excellent. take a look at that. Mike Curley. Um, can you just go over how, how the docks work when it's high water and then when the ice moves in and freezes over the cove? Because sure. they're going to be in there all year. Yep, they are, they are year round. That was one of our key conditions. and. Um, the way it works is the, the docks with the floats in general remain about an inch and a half above the water on a regular day. And they're um, anchored to the bottom with a, they call it an elastic road that if you can think of um, a very strong elastic band that expands and contracts based on the water level. And it's designed based on uh, the conditions of the cove. So it's actually purchased and installed based on the water conditions we've had and have seen a history. So that will flow and go up and down as the, excuse me, as the water level 
goes up and down in the cove, and we know it goes up and down a lot. So that's the, the first piece of the design process. With the ice um, forming around it, because the, um, the docks float above the water, most of the docks are, will always be out of the water when the ice freezes. So you'll just have a small portion that'll be in the water, and they're designed to withstand ice freezing around them. They're not designed to withstand, um, if a, we're not on the river, but if a piece of, of ice came down the river, something like that, they, they don't, uh, they're not designed for that, but they're designed to stay in place. And then each year you, you have to look at general maintenance just to look at the connection pieces that are, um, they're uh, flexible rubber that um, has held up well. We've actually seen um, places in Canada where they've used them year round and they've held up very well. So that's kind of how it works. And one other thing is that as part of this dock process, many of you are aware that when the water comes up, the, um, it's, it's not the beach, the, uh, the road in front of the warehouse floods. We've also designed a piece called, we call it a movable float that stays attached to the dock in normal times, but should we know that the water's coming in, we can float the other piece of the dock right onto the road so we can access the docks from the higher elevation. So it's all part of the dock design that we went through. Thank you. Kathy, how much time did you spend taking the old ones in and out every year? I mean, that was a fair amount of staff time, wasn't it? Yeah, it's probably um, a week to 10 days uh, putting them in if, if everything was okay. If they had to replace stuff, which happened all the time, that would extend the uh, putting them in. And then taking them out, you had to try and find the right time when the water was low and you could get in there and pull them all out. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of wear and tear on the docks also. Yeah, so that's all eliminated with this, obviously. Yes. Good. Thank you. If for some reason we needed to take the docks out, can we do that, or are they permanent? No, they're, um, they're, they're in pieces. They're modular. So you can disconnect, and if you had to take them out or you knew I know, something was coming. Flood. Yeah. Yeah, they could definitely be detached and pulled out. I'd have to figure it, there'd be some work involved in that. Mike, did you, Mike Rowe, um, looking at the contracts, it doesn't look like um, they have a, a warranty written down, but does the company warranty these docks for a certain amount of time, um, just in case you know those elastics break or we do get a winter worse than we got this year? There's a, an eight-year warranty with okay. the dock system. Perfect. Thank you. Further questions? Seeing none, thank you, Kath. We have a motion and a second. In favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thanks, Kath. Finally thank getting it done, right? Yeah. After all these years? Terrific. Long time. <clears throat> 4B. Motion to accept a bid from SK Mechanical for the replacement of the burners and the boilers at Hamner Elementary School for $33,915. Second. Motion and a second. Jeff? I'll ask uh, Mr. Bushy to talk about this one. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Fred. Uh, we had approximately um, seven bidders that came in. Uh, lowest was SK Mechanical at 33.9. Um, I won't go to the highest, but the, the next was uh, 39450 and the last was $40,241. Uh, we, we opened the bids on March 19th, and uh, it gave me a little time to vet these folks out. Um, they seem to have everything in order and ready to go, so I'm, uh, I'd like to recommend that, uh, uh, that we choose SK Mechanical to replace the uh, boiler burners at the Hanmer School. Questions for Fred? <clears throat> Tony? Uh, Fred, once this work is done, do you know what kind of energy efficiencies we'd be getting out of this? Well, 
they should burn at approximately 89%. Uh, right now, our burners are probably running about 70 to 72. Jeff, I'm sorry. Fred, this is uh, this will be done during the summer? Yes. Yes, is it, there's a, a eight to 12 week lead time on the burners because they're custom made for the uh, uh, for the boilers. Okay, and I can't, I can't recall what your what the expectation was for this project, but this, does this come in a little below what we had? Yes, there was a, do we we earmarked through one percent funding um, the uh, approximately forty eight thousand forty eight thousand seven hundred dollars something to that effect. Okay, and that's in the is that the current that's the current year budget so it's basically it's in capital it's in yeah for the yes. current fiscal year yes okay okay great thank you mm -hmm. other questions seeing none we have a motion and second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed abstentions thank you Fred thank you 4c motion to approve change order number 143 with Ferguson Electric for $38,219. Second. Motion and a second in front of us, Jeff. Uh, I'll ask Mike Turner to talk about this one. Good evening. There's uh, numerous lights and light fixture styles throughout the high school. Um, the particular lights that are in uh, of discussion tonight are the uh, lights that are installed in the gymnasium. Um, and what we're doing is we're looking at the entire lighting package as a whole. Um, these particular lighting fixtures, the J, J1, H, and H1, are the lights that the, the LED lights that are illuminating the, uh, the, gym, the new gymnasium floor. What we're looking or hoping is that um, all of the other lights are, are not everything has been released yet. So the architect is in the process of um, seeking out credits on other lights um, to achieve these particular lights in the, in the gymnasium. So this, this is an add onto the, onto the cost of the lights. He's seeking a, a, essentially an equal credit for other types of, and styles of lights within the gym that will come. To, I, I had hoped to be able to bring that to you at the same time, but they're not done with their negotiations. They're still in the process of getting samples and, and things like that. So, just so we're clear on this, the lighting that was installed in the new gymnasium obviously has had some issues. I think there's some dark spots, there were some concerns. So, this particular bid is going to replace those lights or add no, addition of this, two? The, there, well, there were, there were a, additional lights added to the gym because it was, um, when, the, when the designer designs the gym floor and the spacing of the lights, he depends on what's known as the photometrics or, or the light spread calculation that, that's supplied by the lighting manufacturer, okay? Um, and in that case there, he laid out where the light should go on the gym floor and it still produced shadows. So the lighting company actually provided to ONG um, additional lights to make up the difference um, at their cost. And that's been done okay. already? That's been done already. Okay. When, so, when was that uh, completed, Mike? Just out of that was uh, probably about three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. Okay, so after the yes. last game was played. Yes. yes. Okay. Subsequently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think the board. I, I don't know. If Fred's still here. I think the board is happy with the lighting levels at this at this point <laughs> in the gym. It's much, yeah. It's much better. So, um, all all of the shadow issues had had been taken care of. So the cost for this so. is going to be borne by the electrical electrical contractors in, in the swap, assumedly. I'm saying. No, Rus uh, Rusty, the architect, is looking at changing out the styles of other fixtures and eliminating, I think, 35 other fixtures that won't be needed uh, throughout the building in exchange for trying to get... These are very high-quality lights in the gymnasium. They're LED. They're energy efficient. Um, you know, I, I don't think we're going to you know, end up having to change a light bulb there for you know, 30 years, one of those, one of those things. So, yeah, no, so. Um, so this, this ends up being an add. There will be a subsequent deduct that will become before you, and our, our hope is that there's a, it's a net wash uh, of the cost. These were a higher quality than... Yeah, I, ga that, I gather from that. Yeah. So, so I, mean, I mean, not to be cynical, but, like, who missed this? I mean, obviously the lights were not adequate when they first were done. 
Um, no, they're adequate. I think, you're, again, we're depending on computer-generated simulations of, of what the light spread is going to be. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I, I imagine any small variation, whether it's a change in mounting height of a couple feet or whatever, um, you know, at first we thought it was interfering with things like, you know, baskets and things you know, and other fixtures that were hung from the from the, from the roof, but that was that's not the case. So, Mike, I'm not, just I'm still a little confused. I want to make sure I understand it. So the lights that are in the gym currently are going to be replaced by these. No, no, no. We've got. These, these are these are the lights that were specified by the architect, and those were that they, and have been installed. There's an upgrade to the it's it's a convoluted uh, thing the way they they specify um, what's known as a basis of design light, and then they have to provide alternative um, manufacturers um, to allow the competitive bid process to work. Um, so in this case here, we paid. Kind of the premium on this particular light, and we'll in exchange get other numbers and quantities of other lights reduced to, to offset those costs. Uh, Mike, my memory when when Rusty was talking about that, this was one area that he did not think we should compromise. Is that that is correct? Um, he, he felt strongly that those lights were the lights we should have. That is correct. Yes. And, and in that group of information is also that letter from um, Ferguson Electric. It's pretty um, d disconcerting. <clears throat> is the committee working on that? I mean, there's some really strong points that are addressed in that, and it's very disturbing at this point in the project. I, to, I think the whole the whole see that. yeah the whole submittal process was pretty frustrating on both. You know, both regards uh, from both, you know, the architect expecting a certain quality and, and you know, defending our position and, and wanting the best uh, versus what had been specified and, and the contractors attempt to use loopholes in the contract to try and get around those and furnish lesser quality fixtures. So um, without a doubt, Rusty has been fighting for us, um, you know, to uh, make sure that we get the best product we can. Um, in, uh, as the Deputy Mayor said, it's particular in, in areas that, you know, are of great visibility and, you know, I mean, you know, these, these gym lights are obviously, a, you know, an important fixture in, in, in the overall scheme of things and, you know, if we can compromise on other, like, let's say like an exterior light outside of a doorway, something like that, um, and we can accept, you know, different manufacturers there, then that's, that's what he's attempting to do. To look, he's looking at the whole global package. I don't know how many different lights there, you know, there are, but there's quite a few. Mike Rowe. Um, thanks, Mike. You might not have the answer to this, and it might have to be a question to the building committee, but did Ferguson Electric come with any references or from uh, uh, previous jobs that they had done? That Ferguson is a big company, and they were the low bidder, and I think they were the only bidder on the electrical trades that was within our budget, if I recall. Um, but the firm does have a history of seeking extras. Did we know that beforehand? Yes. Yes. And that's why we've kept a kind of a short string. Tight, tight reins on this, tight on this on particular on contract. On in okay. terms of his work, his performance, his quality, yes. I mean, he's, they're fantastic. They're, they're probably one of the vendors out at the high school that is well ahead of schedule. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mike, for that explanation. Appreciate it. I think we've answered the questions. Uh, we have a motion and second in front of us for this change order. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And uh, finally, 4D. Motion to authorize the town manager to apply for and accept a state matching grant program for elderly and disabled demand response transportation dial a ride expansion grant in the amount of $31,733 for Wethersfield and $89,436 total. 
and to sign a memorandum of understanding with the towns of Newington and Rocky Hill to provide a Tritown medical transportation service. Second. Thank you. Motion is second, Jeff. <clears throat> hey, Mr. Mayor, Council asked Kathy Badley to <coughs> come up one more time. Uh, <clears throat> this grant is uh, the expansion of our dial -a ride system. We've had this in place now for a number of years. It actually provides services to other area towns that our dial -a ride does not do. So five days a week, we go to a variety of different towns for medical appointments only. And that's what the expansion grant is through the state. They wanted to see it. It doesn't supplement existing budgetary dollars, but it provides additional service to both our elderly and disabled residents in town. Questions for Kath on this? Pretty straightforward. Just one. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm assuming that this is a well-used service within, mm -hmm. this, um, within these different locations because it really does get outside of the Hartford area. It, it absolutely does because of that, because um, nowadays people's medical appointments are, uh, we hit all the major towns in our area now that have medical um, offices. And there's a good demand? Very, yes, the, uh, the demand, like for us, we, we're allocated 184 rides a month for um, Weathersfield service, and we probably average about 170, 175. Wow. The nice thing is we haven't had to deny a ride at this point, which is something we re work really hard on. Thank you. Uh, I see no further questions. Uh, motion is second in front of us for the authorization. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thanks, Thank Kath. You. I think you're done for the evening. <laughs> I think so. Great. Uh, we have a resolution which has been introduced, and we will meet move to regular meeting minutes approval of March 16th. Motion to approve. Second. Any changes, deletions? Um, Paul, I, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking through the section, and I think it's on pages five and six. This was about Fairlane, which we tabled. Correct. And I'm trying to figure out where it says that we tabled it in the minutes. It, it, the, it almost sounds like we approved it, that the vote, the 8 0 vote was to approve it, not to table it, unless I'm missing some words somewhere. Yeah, it looks like we missed a paragraph there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely change that to uh, move to table. There must have been some discussion, I assume I wouldn't hear, that um, there was a question about the missing page. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so we should include some backup as to why. That, that vote was obviously the table, so. Thank you. Other changes? Okay, assuming that change. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstention here. Okay. Public comment. Gus. Good evening again. Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Few comments today. 4% uh, increase, I think, for the town budget. I think it's way too much. As I have stated before, for the past three or four years, the household income, the average household income for the people that work in private has not gone any place at all, if anything has gone down. While the household income for people that work for government has been going up. When is it gonna stop? Okay, somebody has to represent the, the residents in town we cannot afford to pay. The for, for the past four years, it's an average of 3%. It's a lot of money. Park and recreation, I guess, you know, for maintenance is $220,000. For payment maintenance is $25,000. Wow. When was last time any of you has, has driven on Bird Road 
between Silos Dean and it's just to the, I guess, you know, to the west of that. That road there, there has more patches than pavement alone. It's ridiculous. If we really want to impress people when they come in, the road system should be improved by a lot. The extra you just approved $38,000 because of additional lighting. Something went wrong there. We did pay the, the consultant to give us a good design. They did something, it wasn't a working right. Now the consultant is looking for to, to decrease the quality and, and quantity of other switches to accommodate or to get some of money back. I think that's ridiculous. Somebody should be responsible for that. It's part of the design, we paid it, and yet, it wasn't correct. I, I think it's bad. Going back to the stop sign, I wanted to say something because Hillcrest Avenue, intersectional site distance as measured by the town is 344 feet toward Silas Dean and 970 feet to Walker Hill. On Morrison Avenue and Tifton Road the side distance is only 232 feet and they're telling me that we don't need a stop sign there. The police department has stated that an orchard looking east towards Silas Dean, the, we can only see 290 feet and they have said that's why we need a stop sign. If you need a stop sign 200, for 290 feet intersectional side distance, don't you think you need one for 232 feet? Does anybody ask the town engineers, any of you there, to see if I'm right or they're right? What is the reason? Or is it because you don't care? You're not accountable for? You cannot be sued for anything? God forbid something happens. What's going to happen? This is ridiculous. Something needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you, Gus. Other public comment? Dave? Uh, good evening, David Kirk, on 49th Street. Uh, thank you, Gus. Uh, he showed me the booklet that was in the box over there about your budget, <coughs> your proposed budget uh, that's not going to be finalized today, thanks to uh, uh, Donna Hedman, who informed me that uh, today is just a uh, discussion. I looked, through, I looked through it for everything I talked about earlier. I talked about things I talked about at the Board of Ed. <coughs> regarding the programs that they wanted. I talked about uh, that they wanted the new technology, the new textbooks, and then I went, then I went in this 200-page book, and I looked for it, not in, not in here, not in here. I guess you can't put in every, everything in here, but, uh, it's there. but uh, may, maybe it is in here. It is. I, I couldn't find it. I, I, gotta, I gotta put my glasses on, I guess, but... Uh, <coughs> I don't know if you approved it or if you didn't approve it, but um, I, I hope you did. But uh, I looked, and, and it, it's just a lot of information. It was, it was hard for me to go through it. And, uh, and uh, thanks for telling me that it was in there. Uh, I don't know if you approved it or not, but uh, that, that's a lot of information to go through. Uh, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, final budget, I... I I don't know when it's going to be. It's going to be in March. Uh, well, no, wait, wait, wait. It's already March. Uh, it's past March. May 15th, they have to adopt. May, May 15th. Okay. Okay, well, I hope uh, the Board of Ed gets some of this. Uh, what's in here? i got to take a second look here, see what uh, what's in here. I don't, I don't know if this is what... You're planning on improving, or, or, or this is just proposed? It's just proposed. I don't know. This is there's there's no uh, as far as you guys are concerned, th th there's no approval of any of this, right? We haven't even discussed. Correct. Oh, okay, okay. So this is just just uh, what's been put out there. Well, okay. Well, uh, I don't have too much to say about that then. You know, you know. I guess when 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 it's approved, it's approved, and when it's not, it's not. Uh, I I hope you approve some of the things the Board of Ed uh, 
requested because I think that it's it's very important. Our schools are very important in uh, Connecticut. Uh, as I said earlier, my son is uh, still in private school, and um, I'm hoping on transferring him to public school if uh, public school offers uh, what I hope they will offer. Thanks. Thanks, David. Uh, good evening again, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, you folks tonight had a great time, I noticed, approving grants after grants. What, you know, too bad you people personally didn't have to pay for this and come up with this kind of money. But it, so many of these issues require Just applying a for a grant, applying for a grant. 400,000 whatever to for the feds get some money from them from the state get so many from them we we live so far beyond our means and there's no stopping to it we've seen this in our, in our in the renovation of a high school we've overbuilt the high school we've taken on more money than what we should have and we continue Raising taxes. Gus is right. 4.7.4, oh boy, 4.07% increase for the town side and the board side. That's a heck of an increase. What do we see in inflation in, these, in, in our days right now? We don't see much inflation, but we see a 4.07% increase, which I think is horrendous considering the economy. We've gone through a bad so many years since the recession started in 2008. And there's no end to this recession. Some might think so, but I don't believe so. I think there's more bad times coming. And we're going to see that in the financial markets. But in the meantime, you folks just continue looking for grants. I don't know where that money comes from. but. It's coming from the rest of us, obviously, in borrowed format, not in cash out the door. And really, it's going to be the children someday they are going to be paying these bills. And, but nobody up here really cares. You know, we're working on paving. How, how, good, how good is this um, general paving company? is now going to be putting on uh, the fair, fair lane uh, road renovation, tear it up and make it new. Um, how, how good of a performer are they? But we keep spending. We don't give a hoot. I s still see the creases going down the street. I see portions of the street where the creases should be, but there's not. And then I see other portions where they're opening right up. And then we have to pay to go fix those. Why aren't those people who put the stuff down responsible for going back after a certain period of time to fix? But we end up paying. It's another 25, another 50,000, and it just continues on. And that's where it builds up to the type of 4.0% increase that. The town manager now is looking for the town side and the, and, and, the, and the board side. And then you go look at the board. Look at their, their financials. Has anybody really looked at those at the year end? And you see all those incumbencies that they have at the end of the year. They come out with the state. They close their books as of June 30th of whatever year it is. And as they give the report the first week of October, you see, there's still a lot of money that they've encumbered. They haven't paid for yet. They haven't received it yet to make payment back. That should go back to the old year. That should go back to the town council. Instead, you're allowing this to go on. As they accrue, and they only have a certain amount of time to identify before the June 30th, 
and make that commitment and they only have a short period of time to get that product and make payment. But it's obvious four months after, they still haven't gotten the product yet. They haven't made the payment yet and you allow them to, to, to spend that money. They have, they have a lot of money left over at the end of the year if you ran them right, but you don't run them right because you have to take care of them and everybody else gets hammered. So it, I really encourage you to really look at that budget on the board side and, and make some, some drastic cuts. You haven't done it in a number of years. You give them all the time, every year you've been giving them what they want. Yeah, I think even last year you gave them more money than what they were asking for. And you're probably going to do that again this year. That's a shame. <coughs> That's an insult to the, to the public who come and vote for you. And of course, I don't vote for you. But I have no problem coming here and telling you. <laughs> I'd rather vote for a dead person. I'd rather write and vote huh. than, than you folks because you just don't do it. You don't represent me. Why would I vote for you, Jeff? You're sitting there laughing. Why? I'd rather vote for a dead person. I get better <laughs> results because your results that you give me are very economically hurting. You really are. And I see this constantly. So anyway, Mayor, We'll talk in two weeks. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Yes, sir. Um, before we go into a, uh, executive session, I take a motion and just for the benefit of David's point, maybe for clarification for the public, so we could just share. There are a couple of dates on our calendar as a council with regard to the budget. The first is a full day budget workshop on April 25th, a Saturday, um, where various departments will be attending and presenting their individual budgets to us for evaluation. And then we also have on the following week, on the, tw uh, th the 30th, uh, an evening budget workshop, uh, which will do the same. So, uh, and then we go into the following week where we have some tentative scheduled uh, budget hearings as a council to complete our, our process and deliberation. To the point that Dave was making, obviously on the uh, 16th, the board presented their budget to the full council. We will obviously deliberate that budget along with the budget process on those dates, as well as the contingency dates in May with the intent to pass our, a finalized budget on the 15th. Those uh, budget workshops are posted and available. Um, and then as you well know, uh, on the 20th of April, Monday night, is the public hearing where anybody from the public can come and speak on any aspect of the budget, uh, not only the town side, but the uh, the Board of Education side. And just to be clear, in the budget book that David referred to, uh, that budget covers all of the individual detail for departments on the town side, but also references the budget submitted by the board, which is a separate booklet document that we've received. So um, anybody from the public who is interested in uh, weighing in on not only the town department budgets, but the Board of Education budget, which has been submitted to council for deliberation, can do so at the public hearing. They can also attend any of the the budget workshops which will be posted um, in addition to uh, the passage evenings which will be finalized in the first week of May with April, I'm sorry, May 15th being a deadline. So um, I know you didn't get a chance to fully look at it, David, but just so you're clear, there is workshops set up which people can attend. And it, that in process of evaluating the submitted budget from not only uh, Jeff on the town side, but the board's submission to us for approval will take place at that time. So um, it's a, it, there are still quite a few steps yet before passage. Uh, Dolores? I just have a, a correction on page eight at the bottom is where I have the uh, information about tabling that. It's just out of place, so we won't oh, replace it. So it just that. has to be Sorry, re, yes. reshifted. Okay, paginated as they say. Yeah. Thanks, Dolores, appreciate that clarification. Um, can I take a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Chris, how are you?